Here we are taking a look at Ibis's new Enduro Bread Mixed Wheel HD6. Here we got the new Ibis HD6. Pretty sweet bike here. This is a uh, mixed wheel configuration. The biggest, the burliest bike that Ibis has made here to date. Uh, I just want to run over a little bit of this new bike. Maybe some comparison of like what the HD5 was, was its predecessor of 27 and a half only wheel bike, as well as the current Ripmo. This bike is now their enduro bred bike, taking sort of the place of the king of the Ripmo, uh, but really it's gonna sit in a little bit different class, obviously with that mixed wheel configuration. So this bike itself is pretty cool. Uh, we've been out here putting some testing in, really enjoying this bike. Now I've owned the HD5 as well as the Ripmo, so I'm pretty familiar with both, as well as ridden tons of Ibis. Love the DW links. So this has got the new DW linkage set up that for Ibis now, as you can see, straight top tube now. Pretty stoked on looking at this. Again, gorgeous looking bike. So this is still going to be a clevis compressed, but it tucks everything inside of front of the frame. So you're not gonna get any of that wear on the shock bushings as much, as well as very clean and, and uh, tight formed in there. Pretty cool little aspect on this bike as well as if you look here, laser etched uh, Newton torque specs on there. I love that, you know, all of us at service bikes really appreciate that. And what Ibis has done, you know, on the previous bikes now too, is offer the uh, Durling type of bushings in there without the bearings. So we have less weight, less movement in there and, and uh, still have that warranty all the way through on that. So again, this bike is the mixed wheel version, basically taking the, the place of the HD5. Now, with that said, this bike has jumped up in travel. So this is going to be a 180 front travel with a 165 rear travel. Uh, it sounds big, sounds burly, but let me tell you with that DW link, it pedals great, still feels like a fun bike out there without feeling under over gunned uh, just for your local trails even. So this bike, it's actually climbs pretty well for, for the size of travel it is. It's got a pretty short chain stay. It's got 435 chain stays that run across all sizes, but it does have a variable seat tube angle. It starts from about 77 up to 77 and a half or so right around there. So it just changed through the sizes. Um, and what I do really like is because this bike is a mixed wheel setup only, there's no compromises. I've ridden a lot of mixed wheel bikes that use linkages and stuff like that to change. You have a lot of compromise with that. You don't get any different, maybe the shorter chain stays, so you get that little bit feeling difference, as well as one of the biggest things I've noticed with mixed wheel bikes that have like a linkage system is the head tube sit really high on that. What Ibis has done to compensate for the 180 travel out of this is actually make a very short head tube. As you can see, the stack height on this is pretty low. So you get that front, uh, a little more front travel out of it that complements the 165 in the rear, but it doesn't feel weird. It doesn't give you that real top end feel. And what I really love about this is like a lot of those other bikes, those big bikes that you're starting to get into there is you feel that, that front end flop around corners or at slower speeds. I definitely do not feel it out of this bike. Really love it. Really is having a, a blast with this. Um, and again, like I said, comparable to the Ripmo, um, this, this bike is gonna ride, I'm gonna obviously a little bit bigger than like what the Ripmo feels. You'd be surprised the numbers aren't quite far off. So this is a 64 degree head tube angle on that. So we're about 0.9 degrees. So let's say a, a one degree difference or a sl a slacker than what the Ripmo is. You could fill it, but not hugely on that because obviously the compensation of the seat tube angle as well as the shorter chain stays on that you're gonna get through this. But I will say, this bike actually has a little bit shorter reach than the Ripmo, but longer than the HD5. So it's sitting in between those two, a little more aggressive with the slacker, uh, it's, but not gonna give you that huge 29 inch, big plowy, plowy bike. This has got that real at heart, wanna play bike with a travel to go out and smash. Um, I personally think this fits a little bit more closer to obviously the HD5, more so than the Ripmo. Um, I actually really, again, I enjoy all the Ibis bikes, but the HD5 was a fun bike that was, uh, that was basically, um, you know, the 27 half has done its time um, with the with the mixed wheel. It does give it another just level of confidence out of it. It did jump uh, 10 mils more in the front and 10 mils more in the in the rear to compensate for that and getting back out there. Uh, this definitely has a better rollover resistance in the front and that travel and traction with the new DW link has just been is phenomenal. Um, 
What I really do like about this bike too and the setup with the new DW is there's a lot of times, especially with an X2, you can get out there, you can get real finicky with buttons and stuff like that and the knobs. Um, I was able to get out, probably turned uh, the compression once and I think I took two clicks of, of uh, high speed rebound out and pretty much dialed. So what I what that really tells me is, is Ibis isn't relying a whole bunch on their shock to do all the work. It's in the schematics of the frame itself and they've put in the time into the suspension layout to dial that in to not have to worry as much on the shock. It makes a huge difference of that and you can really feel. And on top of that, like most DW and most Ibis bikes with climbing, this bike stays pretty high up in its travel. So even at that 165 rear travel that I just, even when I saw it on paper, I was like, ooh, this is gonna be a slug uphill. It pedals extremely well and still, it still stays lively because it stays really high up in its travel. Pedals really well, has traction. It doesn't get you that deep down squat that you're gonna get, you know, out of some bikes that with that big travel that wanna just slug up that you have tons of traction. This is gonna give you that lively peppy on top. I sort of like, you know, it keeps you energetic and keeps you moving, um, but doesn't give you the sense that you're on a huge, huge bike. It almost makes you feel like you're on just a, a big travel, all mountain type of type of bike. Um, and what's really cool with this too is comparable to obviously like the Ripmo being that the fashion that it does have the 27 and a half in the rear, it is a little bit more lively. I find myself to be able to push into it, actually get a little bit more pop. It, it's going to reward that customer that really wants to play around, throw around, have a good time, as well as just go out and smash, man. Like this thing is just a blast. And I, I just, I'm looking to put some more miles in it and we'll have some more fun. And we'll always come back and just talk about this bike and we'll keep you updated as we work through this as a longer term review. If you have any questions on this bike or any other IBIS bikes, we'd love you to reach out to our gear advisors and keep pedaling.